What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fudge Mop, but it's Scott here and welcome to another redone build on the channel. This is going to be our final Skyrim build, although there's technically one more coming, the Argonian Cup Collector. So let's talk about what Ashlanders actually are. Ashlanders do happen to be Dark Elves, which is of course my favourite race in the Elder Scrolls, and they're basically nomads who live a very segregated and ritualistic lifestyle. Their culture and beliefs are based upon prophecies and their worship centres around the Daedra, Azura, Fala and Boethia. Ashlanders are very distrusting of outsiders, however, if helped by one, they may give them the title of clan friend. This is important for role playing if you choose to have a companion. For the backstory, we like to say this character is a former Ashkhan, and Ashkhan is the traditional leader of an Ashlander tribe, and the reason I say former Ashkhan is because when Red Mountain erupted, the Ashkhan was forced to flee to Skyrim from his tribal lands in Vardenvel, and with his whole clan killed or separated, his title is no longer recognized. Recognized. You could also create a female alternative, role-playing as a wise woman which is the spiritual leader of the tribe, but the build is exactly the same. Being an Ashkhan, you still possess a large amount of power and you can show this through extreme use of fire magic. We also picked fire magic as Dark Elves have fire resistance so it makes sense that he can't be harmed by his own flames. This build is a pure mage and he'll be using fire destruction and the conjuration of Daedra as his offensive skills, with alteration and enchanting to bolster his defense. As you can see we're using light armor but you won't need any perks for this as your enchanting and alteration will give you a high enough armor rating and magic resistance to survive. Speaking of magic resistance, the Lord Stone is a great standing stone choice for the Ashlander as he'll become even tougher with 50 more points of armor rating and a 25% higher resistance to magic. That said, this was our old stone choice and in retrospect we should have gone with the Atronarch Stone. This will give you minus 50% magicka regen but in return grants you 50% more points of magicka and a massive 50% to your spell absorption. This is fantastic protection and will help any mage build to fire off more damage. We'll put a perk link in the description as always, and when you click it you'll find out that this build is also using alchemy. This is because Ashlanders live off the land and an Ashkhan should have knowledge of making potions to aid them in their wilderness lifestyle. This will end up being very useful as you will use fortify enchanting potions and you can make the effects on your armor even better than any other perks can. The light armor being used is the Morag Tong armor from the Dragonborn DLC and we chose this for the real nostalgic Morrowind feel. It's also essentially just black chitin armor so it fits really well. Traditional Morag Tong attire looks very different. Like any mage playstyle, you'll need to create distance between you and your enemies. Dual cast an alteration flesh spell such as Ebony Flesh and then switch out to Conjuration. In the end game, you'll be able to summon two things and you might want an Ash Guardian and a Dramora Lord or one of these and a Fire Atronarch or two of the same thing. After using your flesh spell and summoning your Daedra, you'll have a massive advantage and be more than ready to kick ass. You'll then switch to dual casting fire destruction spells such as incinerate and then proceed to burn your foes to ashes. Speaking of ash, you can also use any other ash based spells such as ash shell to paralyze your opponent and fit in with the theme. If you want to be even more powerful, be sure to add lots of extra slots for enchanting such as a ring and a necklace. We recommend enchantments such as fortify destruction and conjuration and if you want to, you can even use fortify light armor. Magic resistance is also a sensational choice. If you want even more enchanting slots you could add a helmet or circlet however personally Michael and I like to keep the faces of our characters unmasked so you can really see the essence of who they are. In terms of a stat spread you might assume a pure mage would have more magicka than health however we're going for a completely even split. No stamina needed. The reason for only having 50% magicka is because your casting costs will be reduced heaps by enchanting and 50% is still plenty to stay alive. Perhaps earlier on you'll invest heavier into the magic side of things. 50 percent health alongside all your enchantments and armor is more than enough to keep you alive. Don't forget the standing stones too. The Lord Stone or the Atronarch Stone will add a massive boost to this build. And that wraps up our final legit Skyrim build, the Ashlander. Although I hear the Cup Collector Argonian is pretty legit too. Thanks for watching and thank you so much for enjoying everything we do here on the channel and the perk link is in the description for you as always. I look forward to nerding out with you all again next time.